Hello everyone and welcome back to Andrew's Art and Models. Today we've got something a little bit different for you today. We've got uh, a triple build. So I'm building three Airfix P51Ds. I'm building a Tuskegee one, I'm building a Blue Nose, and I'm building one for the RAAF. So they've all got uh, different schemes. Um, two of them are metallic, but uh, the third one for the RAAF isn't. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start off showing you uh, the build process uh, of the uh, last two that I did. I did the Tuskegee first, then learned a few lessons, so I'm doing the last two first. Uh, but I am going to show you the Tuskegee one um, completed. So you're going to see me jumping around a little bit. Um, you might end up seeing a couple of different cockpits and you know, a couple of identical sprues, and that's because I pretty much built them at the same time. So, kicking off, you saw me filling up the um, pin marks in the wheel wells. There, that's really only injector pin marks that you really have to worry about in the kit, and they're not that bad, not that hard to fill. Uh, I then spray the interior NATO green, followed by a khaki. Uh, so that would be XF67, followed by XF49. Uh, so I just decided I like that look. Then picked everything out with a bit of NATO black, uh, which if I'm not mistaken is F XF69 rather. So yeah, pick up all the control panels with that, uh, make them look a little bit busier, make the material look a little bit busier. Pan the radiator as well, uh, you're not really going to see it uh, once the model's closed up, but yeah, it's there, let's do it. Alrighty, so picking out all the controls everything like that pretty simple and now I'm just running some um, uh, flat earth XF52 over the uh, back of the seat there to make it look like it's a rest I don't really worry about super detail in the cockpit on these kits it's it's kind of hard to see even with the canopy open it's not all that easy to see in there so, uh, I'll just have a bit of fun with it just doing a little bit of uh, chipping so using uh, flat aluminium from Tamiya once again, that's XF16 and just an old brush and sort of semi dry brushing it on there um, just sort of dragging it over the surfaces to get that, get that effect um, I'm going to do another chip um, pass later on after I've given it a wash so the idea is to make some of the chips look a bit older and, um, and then some of them a bit newer just picking out a few of the controls here with the uh, Tamiya X7 so for the most part, I almost exclusively use Tamiya paints on all of these kits. I did use some Vallejo stuff uh, as well, which I'll show you uh, in the upcoming builds. So we're just going to cover basically the prep on this and then um, the Tuskegee one on this episode. So having painted all the uh, interior parts, I've given them a clear coat. So I've given them a coat of uh, X22. Clear coat to seal them, make sure they're nice and sealed. Then come over with uh, Tamiya's black panel on a wash. Um, and just run this over the top just to bring out some of the details. Use a little cotton tip to uh, clear up any excess. There's really, there's two ways of doing it. You can let it dry, um, then come back with a bit of thinner on the cotton tip and wipe it off. Or you can, uh, if you want a sort of a lighter effect and sort of wipe it off while it's wet and a lot of it will get soaked back up. But, um, it's not as heavy. Same process on the interior parts, once again all sealed. Now I let most of this sort of sit there and dry a little bit and then came back and sort of rubbed it or burnished it off. For the center of the panels, things like that, I dip the uh, end of the cotton bud in a bit thinner and just take out the center bits just to make it look a bit, uh, give it a more of a depth effect. Alright, as I say, I've come back doing some uh, additional chipping. Now, I do apologize if I don't sound the healthiest, I'm, I'm uh, getting over a bad cold. So I actually figured I was pretty good until I started talking on this video and I sound a bit nasally so forgive me everyone. Alright, just chipping up some of the other areas here and I'm just trying to highlight some of the raised areas in the um, wheel bay there. 
get him to stick out a little bit more. Let's see how that works. That's just for the uh, Tamiya Flat Aluminium again. Chip, chip, chips. Everywhere. Alrighty. So now we're getting to the first decal, so the cockpit uh, control panel. Um, in the, yeah, from the forward of the cockpit, sorry, I'm blue left. I'm losing my voice, I'm losing my brain, rather. Uh, use a bit of Mr. Mark software on it just to set it down. Now, once it's dried, you're going to want to cut a little hole in it um, at the top because there's a little locator hole for the gun sight, um, which is a clear part, obviously, which you put in. So you can see me there just cutting a little hole. And this is just to make sure that when I put that part in, um, I don't overly tear the decal or it doesn't snag or anything like that when I've got to put that part in, just in case it's not better down properly. Once that part's in, I'll secure it with a uh, little bit of Formula 560 on the back of a toothpick. You can see me applying that. It's similar to a PVA glue. Um, it will dry and it will hold the part in place and it's not going to um, affect the plastic at all. It's not going to make it fog or go cloudy or anything. Alright, so that's pretty much the same process times three. Uh, I did them a little bit differently in each, but pretty much a similar job. Just cutting out parts of the sprues. Tried, for this project, I tried to paint as many things on the sprues as I could, um, and that was just to stop me from getting parts lost or mixed up, building three different kits at once. Now on the Tuskegee one, I had a little bit of a fit issue with this part, um, but I believe it's me. So you see the little locator at the back on the left hand side there sort of in the back of the fuselage just make sure that it's positioned in uh, really snugly and really nicely and the parts should go together quite well otherwise it, you'll, you'll have to force it a little bit but you can still do it um, and I'll just hold these together with the good old uh, <laughs> good old uh, clothes, uh, clothes pin peg rather there you go so you can see that it all just snaps in Pigs, just while it dries. Now, uh, this is something I forgot to do on the Tuskegee, but I did on the two subsequent ones. So, use your little pin vise and drill a couple of little holes there, locator holes for your drop tanks if you want to fit them. You can do it afterwards, but it is a pain. Now that part there is pretty tricky to get to. I don't recommend trying to cut it off with cutters right at the um, joint. You're probably best just to cut it off a bit further back and then use the sharp blade to uh, remove it and so safely. The plastic can be a little bit brittle, so you just don't want to break it. All right, humble close peaks again. And just while we're talking about the breaking of plastic, the aerials on these kits, um, all of them were deformed, so it's like a mould issue. Um, instead of trying to save the, the kit ones, because uh, they were in really bad shape, I pretty much just uh, scratch built them out of plastic card. Uh, the wings here, just push it back a little bit, snaps into place really nicely and easily, um, and it's an excellent fit. some of the smaller parts. As I said, the plastic is a little bit brittle, so um, if it's going to be a tight fit for the, for the pliers or for the cutters, I'll just like to get the blade in there. Now, as you see, I'm cutting towards me. Don't do that. <laughs> if you need to ask why, then yeah, but yeah, don't do that. It's not the cleverest thing. The Rebel Contactor Glue, I have pretty much loved that since it came out, which is a while ago now, but uh, the applicator is awesome, I love it. Um, you can either, for the rudder there, 
uh, it works okay, but the contact area, the area contact to the actual body of the kit is fairly small, so you're probably better off using a bit of super glue. And we're going to have all the flaps in the uh, down position on every one of these kits, just because I like the look of it better. But I have to hand it to Airfix, these kits are fantastic. They are, for, for what you pay for them, they're awesome. Lining up all the little itty bitty pieces. I leave um, the rear landing gear doors and the few of the, uh, the aerial and a few other bits and pieces off, the small bits off until the last moment. They get attached at the, at the very last stage. Now, on the uh, two subsequent builds, I uh, did this step with the NATO Black. Uh, I forgot to do it on the Tuskegee one initially and then had to come back later and do it which is okay it's still before I put the canopy on but you might notice a difference later in the video good old formula 560 absolutely love this love this stuff it works really well once again just put it around the seams um, it'll lock the part into place you can wipe away any excess with your finger it's not going to fog the plastic at all I'm not going to worry about the paint on the outside of that because that's going to be aluminium so I'm not too concerned about um, any marks left from cutting the screw, I really just want to paint the inside green. Formula 560 again and put the canopy down on top. Just make sure you line up the front of the canopy with those two little prongs that can, uh, they don't sit properly unless you really pay close attention to them. Uh, so using a bit of blue tack. Um, I position the gear bay, or sorry, the um, landing gear doors closed, and uh, I'll paint them in that position. Now, not only does that work as a paint mask for the interior there, but uh, also means I don't have to fiddle around with the, the extra bits. So on the Tuskegee, I didn't do that, but on the other two, um, I did. Alrighty, just getting out a bit of Tamiya filler, filling up the, uh, the seams along the fuse lines, it's pretty standard fare. I always apply it to a, a piece of paper or something so I don't leave the tube open because I don't want it drying up in the tube. So I squeeze a bit out, close it up, there you go. Very easy to use. Alright, this is a sanding tool that uh, one of my friends asked me to try out for him. I believe it's from Squadron and the idea is it's um, good for sanding round shapes. So you have that little U-shape with a bit of um, U-shaped metal with a bit of tape in the centre. And uh, it basically stretches out the, the tape in the centre which is your um, sanding paper. And uh, yeah, you can use it as a fr use the frame to help you work around the corners. It works well. I quite like it. Um, for a small scale model, it's probably a little, yeah, a little bit big. So I sort of switch back to the old old school method. But um, on bigger kits, I don't see why not. That's me just tidying up a bit of a uh, bit of glue there that I missed earlier. So on the underside of the wing here, there's a bit of a mould issue. So there's a bit of plastic that sticks up from the wing and there's also a bit of plastic um, in the recessed panel lines which you need to clear out. Um, if you're going to show those panel lines up with a wash, it's pretty easy to sand it down. Just with a fine grade sandpaper, I think I used 800. Um, and just clear out the panel lines with the, your uh, scriber. Get it clear. Dymo tape love this stuff so you remember the um the label printers that used to be big in the 90s um yeah i'm showing my age a little bit but uh yeah dymo tape printers so that you can still buy the tape i bought this online um and it works as an excellent guide for scribing so on uneven surfaces you can use it on flat surfaces but on curved surfaces especially my hands are quite shaky so 
Um, I like to use this as a guideline just to make sure I don't do anything I'm not meant to. And it works really easily and well. It's good. Fixing up any detail I've taken off. Right, so I've covered the mask. Uh, sorry, I've covered the canopy with the Tamiya mask. Uh, so use their masking tape, just cut that to shape and uh, applied it. The little aqua bit at the back there is actually a Vallejo painting mask. It's all liquid latex. And I'll just dab that on with a um, toothpick. Uh, the idea being is um, it's an awkward shape at the rear there, so it's much easier just to use that to cover it. And it works really well, comes off easily too. Just spraying a bit of grey on there. You can use a primer or whatever you want, but I was just putting down a bit of grey so I could see all the areas where I've been sanding and make sure I hadn't mucked it up. Uh, now moving on to the aluminium, or aluminium, as my American friends would say. Um, basically, this is the Tamiya XF16, again, the flat aluminium. Now, I've heavily thinned it. Uh, I would say my compressors running sort of at uh, about 30 psi but I've maybe a little bit more um, so it's not exactly a low pressure but it's quite thin so I've thinned it to uh, 40 40 40% paint 60% thinner um, as a minimum so it tends to flow out fairly easy because it's high pressure and very thin but I can also very quickly apply a lot of them light coats so you don't want to apply if you're going to apply this by airbrush you don't want to apply it in one big heavy coat it um, really looks very grainy so if you can um, thin it down you can see how thin it is there it's really not making a huge impact on the surface so thin it down spray it up and um, yeah, do two or three coats fantastic See how brutal I am. I'm, I'm you know, not using gloves or anything like that to protect the model. Because I had three of them, it was quite uh, easy by the time I finished spraying the bodies. They were, the first one was dry, so I'd go back to the start and start again. So painting all the parts on the sprues. Um, now I'm painting parts that are going to later be painted as well because I want to do a uh, chipping effect using the Vallejo mask which I'll show you in a second. You don't have to do it this way but it's a bit of fun. Alright, tried to clear coat it and uh, so I like a good couple of coats to clear down before I uh, continue to work on it and start with the rest of the painting and decals and everything. So I want to protect this layer of paint. And I overdid it here, so I just let it dry, let it pull. Don't try and remove it if you do it, just leave it. Let it dry is usually your best bet. And um, that way I sanded it down once it dried, came back, touched it up. You will never know. Um, so once that's done, do one or two coats, clear coated it. Now we've got the liquid mask, applying liquid mask to the areas here. This is the latex uh, mask from Vallejo, who we mentioned earlier. And what I'm going to use it as, I'm going to use it, some of you may have heard of the salt chipping technique where you put salt down on a model and spray over it and, and scratch all the salt off. Similar thing, um, just using the Vallejo instead. So basically I'll be spraying it up and I'll remove it with a toothpick. You can remove it by hand if you want, however you want to do it. You don't have to use the Vallejo. If you're going to use this method, make sure that the underlying paint, so the metallic in this case is clear coated and, and Protected. Um, otherwise, if you don't clear coat it and then you spray over and try and remove it, you're actually popping in with both layers of paint. So make sure it's nice and safe. So it's probably a little bit big for 172. It'll probably look uh, better on 148 using the Vallejo masking technique, but you can certainly chip it with a toothpick instead and achieve some very in scale results which is uh, something in one of the upcoming videos you'll see. Uh, now same deal with the red. Uh, I've got a nice flat surface uh, from the 
metallic in the clears and I really want to keep it that way so I've thinned the red paint down 50-50 with the Tamiya thinner. And that's the Tamiya, what was it, X7? You can see how thin it is there. And um, I just reapply it, reapply it, reapply it, low pressure and I get a nice smooth finish. Now I've applied the, the uh, Vallejo Masking medium to the latex to all of these, all of these parts as well, so I'm going to chip all of these too. Now that uh, green tape is just a painter's tape. Uh, I basically use a Tamiya tape to go up to the lines, get the nice straight edges and make sure I'm not going to damage the paint below. When I want to cover a surface area, I'll just use a regular old painter's tape, it's a bit cheaper. And um, just make sure I lay it down on top of the Tamiya tape if I'm going to use it. Well, I'm not going to damage the paintwork. You can see me chipping off the parts here, and then on the spine, I'll just rub it off with my, with my finger. Great little technique, very simple. Just make sure you clean up all the little parts. You don't want them on the model if you're going to spray it with clear again. Here. So that's a Tamiya clear once more. Give it a couple of coats with that and we'll put the decals on. I've really used a lot of clear on these projects. It's um, unusual for me to use so much. I normally only really sort of clear coat once, but yeah, and because of the metal finish and I wanted it nice and shiny. Yeah, used a bit more. Now just using a bit of uh, sandpaper here. This is about 600 grit and just using it to take back some of the red paint that's on the on the spinner for the propeller and uh, on the landing gear things like that you can see the effect there it's uh, pretty simple it's just another way of chipping it and I'll spray NATO black on the props I did it a bit thin here so came back later and covered it up and we're going to do the same chipping on that as well decals 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 the decals for this set are slightly on the thick side but used with uh, Mr. Mark Softer, they set down really well, so uh, they're not a, not, a, not an issue. I had major issues with them, uh, well, I, what I consider major issues with them, and, but it was all my fault. So you can see here, I'm not being all that delicate with it, I'm just shoving it around with my finger, blah, 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 and um, yeah, I'm not really taking much care in application, but they're quite, quite a tough decal, so it's, it's not that bad. Uh, as I said, they do bed down really well. So sometimes you might have to give it a double dose of the Mark Softer that does well. So here's my first mistake. And I've left them in because I thought, yeah, yeah, I know everyone makes mistakes, you might get a bit of a giggle out of it. But you can see there I've put that one in upside down. <laughs> the little uh, fuel reservoir sign upside down. So I tried to remove it and I couldn't. So I managed to get the circle out, but I couldn't get the little writing bit underneath. So a bit of... Uh, Spare decal saves the day. And once that's in position, I'll all know. See? Look at that. Pretty good. Shh, come on, one. Lots of little decals on this kit, so I just sort of skipped ahead of those. You don't need to see me put them all on. It's quite tedious, and here's where I get a bit cocky and um, make some problems for myself. So I sort of look at it and say, yep, I'm lining the yellow line up with the top wing. And um, so you can see me adjusting it there to make sure it's in the right position. And then I sort of forget about it for some reason and just keep working and speed the process up. I use Mr. Mark Softer instead of wetting the surface. And I dump the decal on so it sets pretty quickly and yeah, I just gave myself all sorts of headaches. And it's not until I get to the front one that I realise. So I would, I would say avoid using Mark Softer straight off the bat. I honestly don't know why I was doing it other than I was probably feeling like I was in a hurry to get it finished or something, I don't know. But you can see there, now I've realised I've stuffed up the alignment and the decals have set. So I'm trying to lift this one with water and a brush and everything. Now the Mark Softer, you can see I'm using it there, but I'm just using the brush really to try and lift up the end because it's nice and soft. I'll break the front decal, but that's alright. Not the end of the world. I'm 
I'm hoping I can repair it. So just keep adding water to it to stop it from setting. Right. This is the part where I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, I'm going to have to spray this. But I managed to get away with it. Go. so I fixed those two the bottom one has well and truly set so I let it soak for a while and um, just work on some of the other ones while I keep applying water to it to try and get it to loosen up you can see there's a bit of overhang on these ones but that's not the end of the world we'll um, cover that in a minute all right so using the sharp edge of the blade I'm trying to very gently lift the decal without damaging the paint or the decal. Using the flat edge, I'm trying to turn it over. So if I'm trying to lift it off the surface, I'll use the sharp edge very gently. Um, whereas if I just want to lift it up, I'll use the flat end. And you can see, see there, I'm using the tweezers. I was, I was pretty amazed I actually managed to salvage that. So that was all my fault, but nothing to do with the kit. Uh, so got a bit of hangover there, we'll fix that. Overhang, hangover, same deal. Right, sharp blade, laying along the edge. I know I'm narrating a lot in this one. I'll be narrating less in the next one, so if I am annoying you, I apologise. I'll be uh, talking a bit less in the other two. But I really wanted this sort of to be a guide for anyone, no matter how advanced you are. When you are. Sharp blade again, just make sure the decals are set to the surface, you don't want to lift them. Wiping off the liquid mask here on the prop. See the chipping effect there. You can always come back and scratch it a bit more. This is where I realised I've, I've forgotten on this kit to uh, change the tone of the metal around the exhausts so it should be more of a steely colour than aluminium. And I'm just using the Formula 560 to fit the camera. wasn't real happy with the um, front of the cockpit, the canopy there, so touch it up a little bit. It's too heavily tipped, touch it up a little bit. Come back a little later and actually remove some of the paint with the teeth and just straighten up the edges. Um, now, the, now the model has had uh, finer details painted. I've given it two clear coats of gloss, and I'm just doing some post shading with the Temia Smoke. Uh, so that's, uh, what's that, X19 smoke very thin but 50 50 mix again and just low pressure just a little post shade you can see the effect there just to change the tone a little bit it's not not a huge difference but it just breaks up the, the surface so i'll do a bit of freehand now i've got some blue tack holding the landing gear in place they're a bit tricky to get set in place so i'm just holding them there whilst they're setting and make sure they don't move and you can see what i've done here with the decal so I didn't mask, I didn't uh, clear coat it properly and um, when I put the masking tape down to do the post shading I ended up ripping it up. Um, so instead of trying to tear the whole thing up and probably damage the paintwork, um, I actually had a spare because I'm turning one of them into an RAAF aircraft so I don't need those um, American ones. So I uh, put, managed to uh, salvage it from that and once again you'll see a little bit of difference in the colour but it just, it really looks like post shading work for me so I'm quite happy with it. Um, here's our Tamiya panel wash again. Just using this to work the lines, make them stand out a little bit more, just pop a little bit, a little bit of depth. Um, I vary, I keep saying I'm a lot, sorry everyone, I keep varying how I use this. Sometimes I'll use it and let it dry, other times I'll use it quite damp. 
So no matter what I do, I try and work it so it's coming off in the same direction as travel, the direction of travel the plane would go. So it's sort of streaking it back, essentially. Um, if I can't do that, I can't do that, but most of the time I can, so I'll do it. I work the top wing wet, uh, just to clear up a lot of it, so it just get to the panel lines a little bit. But later on you'll see on the bottom, because I want it to look a bit muckier, I'll let it dry up and then come back with a cotton tip just work it a bit more so you can see that was wet how that smudged across the back of the wing there so you can see another bit of blue tack holding another part in place really handy stuff there's no real attachment points for the um, in a bay doors, so they just sort of sit in a little slot, I suppose you call it, but it's not really a good anchor point. So uh, they got a dose of they got a dose of um, what was it? It was Bob Smith Industries Insta Cure uh, yeah, super glue. So hold them in. Now once that all dried up. See the similar effect there. It's just staying nicely in the panel lines, clearing up the surface and just smudging what it is left just to give it a bit of a weathered effect. Hit the landing gear of course, and then I'll come back and I'll hit these with um, a dry mink pigment. But it's at this point that I realise oh, I forgot to put the locator holes in. So yet another boo from me. So I take the pins off the uh, actual drop tanks and secure them in place with a bit of um, the Bob's Industry Super Glue again. Bob Smith Industry Super Glue again. I can line them up pretty accurately because I've still got uh, the other kits there as a reference and they've got the holes in them. So I was lucky there. Once again, you can see the repaired decal there. So it just looks a bit of weathering effect, I hope, at least. Uh, I should have really used the Tamiya clear colours there, or any sort of clear there, yeah, so I'll probably go back and fix that up. And yeah, here's the uh, European dust mink pigments just on the on the wheels, a little bit on the landing gear. I tried using uh, Vallejo Burnt Umber um, along the exhaust here, but it wasn't wasn't taking for some reason. I think the model might have been too smooth. So I break out the Artist Pastel Set. Um, a couple of bucks from the local art store, beautiful, and uh, use that for the guns and exhaust streaking. I use uh, a bit of Tamiya smoke too to get some fuel stains from the, from the wind points. bad effect. You can do it with an airbrush, um, whatever floats your boat really. And now putting in the stains. And that's pretty much said and done. So that's the uh, kit ladies and gents. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to have uh, two more coming very very soon. So they're on the cutting, cutting room floor. Uh, but please like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, send a carrier pigeon, all the above. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments below. That would be fantastic. Thank you for watching.